Hello and welcome to Transfermarkt. My name is Matt and I'm joined by Stefan and Ben to discuss the business being done by West Ham United in this transfer window. In the last couple of days, they have announced the signings of Nicholas Fulcrug from Borussia Dortmund and free agent Guido Rodriguez to add to Max Kilman, Crescencio Somerville and Luis Guillerme. Stefan, I want to come to you first about Nicholas Fulcrug because this is one that I think a lot of people weren't really expecting and there, there had been some links for Fulcrug in, in other teams around the world, but when the rumours first surfaced about a move to West Ham, it, it happened fairly quickly. What kind of player could West Ham fans expect to see representing them next season? Yeah, it was a deal that really came out of nowhere, to be perfectly honest with you. The, Dorbin's kind of um, transfer policy with their strikers this summer has really been a bizarre kind of car- like carousel of players coming and going. Uh, we could even see some more moving on. Uh, Yusuf Makuku is another one who's been heavily linked with a move away from the club. Um Full Krug was an interesting one. He obviously just off the back of some really heroic performances for Germany, the Euros, um, did a lot for his reputation in European football as a whole. Um, you know, kind of lead the line for Dortmund in that run to the Champions League final as well. Had some great performances in that as well. But you know, if you if you're tasked a German football fan two o'clock ago with the idea of Full Krug moving to the Premier League, it wouldn't have been that surprising, but it would have been kind of met with a kind of maybe a raised eyebrow just simply because he was kind of seen as a almost like this journeyman uh, in German football, did extremely well at Werder Bremen, uh, and then was picked up by Dortmund simply because they needed a backup to Sebastian Haller, who ironically is a player that West Ham obviously had on their books not too long ago and was deemed surplus to requirement there. So it's funny how these things kind of loop round to one another. But yeah, I think Phil Krug's a really interesting player. I think he's a player that West Ham fans might really enjoy watching. Um his record at Dortmund was absolutely fine. He was a very solid goal scorer. He he worked really hard on and off the pitch. And I would say he probably left Dortmund with something of a cult status considering like the hard work he put in, the way that he did kind of he just kind of looked he's just one of those players that fans really warm to very quickly. Um and I think he's got all the kind of attributes that should suit him quite well in the Premier League. He's you know, he's an extremely physical guy. He famously is missing one of his front teeth, which has kind of become his brand in Germany. Um, you know, he's just not really seen as this kind of clean-cut modern footballer, uh, which obviously a lot of Dortmund fans warm to. I suspect a lot of West Ham fans will too. And I think he should do a decent job there. Um, I'd be interested to see what his goal scoring rate's like as well. He is now 31. Uh, I would say that they probably paid over the over the asking price for Phil Krug, but in this day and age where Premier League clubs do have more money to spend than just about anyone else, it's maybe not the end of the world that they kind of push the boat out to bring him in because he's a ready-made striker who's proven in the Champions League, proven in the Euros, uh, and of course proven in the Bundesliga that he can play the highest level, he can score goals, but even if he's not scoring goals, he's just an absolute handful to play against. And I think that's exactly what West Ham fans want uh, in the box next season. I think the idea of the traditional classic number nine is is coming back into fashion in football and Fulcrug is, is a really, really good example of, of a player who's making that work, like you said there, at the, the highest level at the moment. Ben, West Ham's history of signing strikers isn't very impressive and I think a lot of people over the years have, have rattled off some stats about the amount of strikers they signed who've never even scored a goal, but I think the difference that we're seeing with West Ham now is that they're building a, a much stronger squad around that. And you wrote a brilliant piece uh, about that, which we leave in the description below. But can you just tell us a little bit about how West Ham are, are building that that squad that could be around full crook? Yeah, I think it's been um, it's been a really busy transfer window so far for West Ham, and um, from what I'm hearing from a lot of West Ham fans, it's probably the most excited they've been going into a new season for a very long time. Um, we've got to remember David Moyes has done a superb job, of course, at the club, uh, winning the first European trophy in 64 years. Um, but there was that sense last season that things were getting a little bit stale. Fans were sort of getting fed up of the style of football and maybe a little bit negative style of play. And I think it was the right decision to part ways. They've now got in a manager with a, with a great CV. You know, he's managed at Real Madrid, the Spanish national team. Didn't go that well, but he still managed some um, some, some big clubs and nations. And now they've been very active in the transfer market. And what I like about their potential starting lineup, um, we put a little graphic together of what that could potentially be. Not only is it really excited and has a lot of flair in it, but it looks very balanced as well. When you look at their squad, which has been a problem in recent times, um, Moyes obviously he occasionally would play the likes of Paqueta or uh, Kudus on the wing, when I think those players are probably more natural in a central position. They've now got Somerville, a natural left winger. Obviously, Bowen on the right has proven what he can do at the club. And then Fulgur up front who, like Stefan said, it's a lot of money for a player of his age, but maybe it's actually not a bad value for West Ham in terms of that's exactly the profile they needed to suit the players around them, so they've gone and got their man. Um, there'll be no European football this season for West Ham either, 
so they can just focus on the league. I think it's it's a, it's a really exciting time. I expect there to maybe be some outgoings. Um, if you look in the centre midfield role now, Guido Rodriguez, who's come in as an Argentine international, um, Edson Alvarez is coming back from injury now. He had a good first season and is a player that's very well liked at West Ham. So then that leaves the likes of Thomas Suchek and James Ward-Prowse who are going to be struggling to even get in that team. Um, obviously, it's important to have depth. Maybe we could potentially see an outgoing in there as well. Uh, it looks like Paqueta is going to be cleared to play as well, whether we see him in a central midfield role. And then you could potentially be looking at Mohamed Kudus in sort of a 10 role with Somerville, Bowen and Fulkrug, which makes a really exciting front four. Uh, Matt Kilman has come in at the back uh, for £47.5 million. Pounds. Another exciting signing. Another statement that they're willing to back Lopetegui who has previously worked with Kilman at Wolves and really wanted him to be brought in. So a good statement there. It looks like it's more of a cohesive ship with Tim Steitman and Lopetegui. You know, there was problems before with Moyes, with um, Moyes sort of preferring players that played in the Premier League previously rather than uh, targets that the club's hierarchy were looking at. The other one that they're looking to bring in, uh, that's maybe moving closer, is Aaron Wan-Bissaka as well at right back, which I think could be a great signing, looking at potentially around 15 million euros for one of probably the best defensive right backs in the league. Um, and I think it would certainly be, I think it would be an improvement on Kufa. Uh, and it would give them a really st- uh, a positive lineup going into the new season. I think there's plenty to be excited about for West Ham fans. And I think that summary there of how strong that squad is, is a perfect example of how important directors of football are in the modern era. Because with the, the turnover that we see of managers across all countries, all divisions, all teams, it seems at this stage, the fact that we're talking about players like Edson Alvarez, Mohamed Kudus, who've been brought in for a different manager in a completely different style, that they're going to step into this team and be such in- incredible assets for Yul and Apotegi just shows, I don't think we needed evidence, but if we did, it's there yet again that how, how important that director of football can be. And Stefan, I think what's, what's even more impressive with West Ham is with the loss of Declan Royce last summer, their best player by far, a huge player for them. Losing him, they've managed to build a much stronger overall squad. And Ben used the word balance there as well. And for example, Liverpool, when they sold Coutinho, they managed to do the same. But it does often go the other way where teams just can't invest that money properly. But West Ham have been able to do it. Have you been impressed with that squad they've been able to build in essentially the space of 12 months? Yeah, I have. And yeah, you kind of took the word straight in my mouth with the use of the word surgical almost in the sense that if you look at the players they've signed, they have been very specific about the positions that they think they need to upgrade uh, very clearly, actually. And that should come as some kind of degree of confidence to West Ham fans that Lopetegui's came in and said, I need a new right back, need some wingers, I need a new striker, I need a defensive midfielder in here, obviously to help out in midfield alongside Alvarez. Um and yeah, it all kind of points to something good. I mean, I was a bit of a David Moyes apologist, I must admit. I thought, you know, on paper, he did a tremendously good job. And we talked about it on the show um, after he was obviously announced that he was moving on. A lot of West Ham fans kind of responded saying, well, look, it's not really about how well he did. It's about the type of football he played. It was about this concept of maybe lacking a degree of ambition. And you completely understand that. And, you know, whether this works out or not, you can't really argue that Lopetegui and the, the, the kind of administration behind him at West Ham have obviously gone out and said right well if we're going to go for a top six spot if we're going to go for European places if we're going to try and win some more trophies um, then we're definitely going to spend the money needed to do that to challenge and become a a club with ambitions of finishing in top six but we're just going to have to wait and see obviously how it works out we've seen that a lot of clubs where a new head coach comes in some exciting new signings and all of a sudden the sky's the limit uh, and then six months down the line things begin to fall apart and I do kind of have some reservations about whether Lopetegui is the guy to replace David Moyes just simply because there was such a outcry for West Ham to bring in someone who will play exciting attacking football obviously a lot of clubs in the Premier League very recently have shown that you don't have to be Manchester City or Arsenal to play exciting football you can a lot of good well-run mid-table clubs who play exciting counter-pressing football um, I'm just not really sure Lopetegui is one of the guys that I would he wouldn't be top of my list if I was looking to bring in a head coach to specifically play attacking football whether he does tremendously well on the pitch with successful tactics is another thing um but i do kind of wonder if we might find ourselves in a very similar situation where west ham are doing perfectly well they've got a good squad the manager knows what he's doing to win games or avoid losing games uh, but the fans are maybe still asking for more uh, but maybe that's just a problem west ham have maybe always had they've got very ambitious fans and uh, it's always really been a case of the club trying to keep up with them Ben, what do you think those ambitions should be for West Ham this season? And I think maybe balance the the optimism of fans and the the realistic nature that, that we do need to look at it when you see you know teams like City and Arsenal is getting further and further ahead, Aston Villa are strengthening, Tottenham, Man United, Liverpool, um, and Chelsea of course up in that mix. Where, where do you think the target should be for West Ham this season? 
Sorry. Like you say, uh, it's important to to take into to account the, the quality in the Premier League around them. But I, th- I think they'll be aiming to get into those European places, sort of back into the Conference League, seventh, sixth, seventh, eighth place. Um, and I think they, there can be some genuine hope they can, they can do that. I think, you know, we've had it before with West Ham where they had the star manager in Manuel Pellegrini. They brought in some star players. I think of, you know, like Jack Wilshere coming from Arsenal, Felipe Anderson, uh, was a big star at the time, Chikorito, Javier Hernandez coming in. There was a lot of hope, but it felt like they were just chucking star names. They were spending money without really a plan. Um, and that's why I was trying to make it key. Though. I think I think that the balance is really important here. They, they needed a left winger. They brought in a good profile left winger in Somerville. You know, they needed to add a, a bit more of a technical midfielder. They've done that in Guido Rodriguez. They needed a striker. They couldn't keep playing Antonio every game. They brought in Paul Kruger, a striker who, you know, looking at his attributes, is probably quite suited to come and adapt to the Premier League straight away. Um, so I think there can be a lot of hope. But like like you say, there's got to be some realism as well. It might not. It's a new manager. It's a new style of play. They're not going to come in and just roll over and get in the top four straight away. I think if, if you get a top half finish, I don't mean there can be too many complaints as long as you can see the progression. They brought in some younger players as well, like Somerville like the uh, young Brazilian Luis Gilhelme. So I think I think, I think think a mid-table finish, top half, can be happy, but I think maybe the ambition will be to try and get back into Europe. Let us know in the comments down below your thoughts on the business West Ham have done so far this window and where they can finish in the Premier League this coming season. Hit the like button if you've enjoyed this chat and make sure to subscribe down below for more of this content throughout the rest of the transfer window. For now, thanks for watching.